Welcome and thank you for tuning into the Joy Tutor Podcast. I am your host, Joanna Williams. Together, we will unpack, learn, teach, and celebrate the journey of emerging entrepreneurs and courageous trailblazers. Let's dig in. Hey, Mama D. Hey, baby girl. I'm here. We are here together. I could not have done this without you. It's too early to cry. And don't, don't, don't start. I know I'm not, a, I am not a cute crier at all. Okay. Joy to the listeners. This is Mama D. This is how I call her because she's my bonus mama. But this is Doreen Martin. Listeners, let me just say, having a bonus mama just hit different. It do. Oh, this lady right here. Like I said, it's too, it's too early to get emotional. But the reason why I brought her on the joy to the podcast is because I am just so honored and privileged to share her love, her wisdom, her accountability, her prayers, support, just her being as gorgeous as she is. I'm just saying (laughs) with you guys. So this will be a very heartfelt conversation and episode So let's jump right into it. Mama D, how did we meet? We met by chance. But realistically, we know this was a God-given relationship, a God-given meeting. So we're at work at AT AT&T. I'm I'm thinking we're working a couple of floors apart. I don't know how much you remember. And you know, I'm much older, so I don't know how good my memory is. But we were at work. We're working a couple of floors apart. We're working on the same team. And I am following in your footsteps. You are leading and guiding and teaching and organizing. And, and you were the woman. I was a contractor. So I believe you've been there a while, but I come in as a contractor and I'm like, who is this woman? Who is this fireball? Who is this firehouse, this powerhouse? And so whatever you did, I did. I was emulating you, following you, and you were guiding. You were the guiding light. And it was so funny. I believe we did not know we were in the same building together. Cause I know, I think a lot of the team was like all over the place, New Jersey, California, wherever people were. So we're in the same building working on the, on the same floor in our project team meetings. And then something was said, and you said, you're, you're in this building. I said, yeah, I'm like on the 20th, whatever it was, I was like on the 20 something floor, or maybe you were on 40 or 35 or whatever. And you're like, oh, I'm going to have to come see this lady. And it's been on and popping ever since. Yes, it has. And to give context, we were both project managers at the time at AT AT&T. And I had just, well, I, I can't say I just started. I had been there probably about a good four years by that time. And yes, I, you know, I entered AT&T as a coder, programmer, but project management caught my eye. I was told it would take five to seven years for me to even touch or even get an an initial start on the project management path. Well, within a year's time, I was a a project manager. (laughs) As always, you were doing. And by the time you and I crossed paths and you joined the PMO team, I was helping them stand up their PMO office. I was, you know, onboarding project manager consultants while running my project. So, um, yeah, I was a busy, I had a lot of energy back then. Yes, you did. Watching you, listening to you actually wore me out, but it's okay. (laughs) It's okay. I didn't try to keep up. I was happy just, you know, plodding behind, but um, you were rocking and rolling. You were the dynamo. You were leading it. Thank you. Well, that was just the beginning, right? Because we started communicating outside of work. I just latched on very quickly and I just saw your heart. And one thing about me, I love wisdom. If someone can save me a heartache, heartbreak, or just really a few steps along the process, I'm here for it. 100%. Everyone's not like that. And I definitely picked up on that in you. But I also saw your light, your strength, your intelligence, your beauty. Girlfriend, you had it going on from day one, always. (laughs) So I don't know if you remember, 
but we're we're always working hard. But when I met you, I know you had worked on your bachelor's. You did that by yourself. You did your master's and then you started the doctoral program. But when I met you, I was just catching little rays of that energy, you know, to keep me going. I was like, okay, I can do this because you youngins, oh Lord, we would be talking about stuff. And God put so much on my heart for you. Mm. And no questions asked. It, it is what it is. So I just had to share what God put on my heart. Uh, baby girl, you know, you have a lot going on and then some. Yeah, mm -hmm, I know. Mm -hmm, and you just busy. I said, well, you know, you've got to take care of you because you can't take care of everybody and everything until you take care of you. Mm -hmm, okay. Okay. I, I still remember it was so important to me to tell you to protect you because you are so loving. You are so kind. You are so open. You are so honest. You are so good. People will take advantage of that. And I can't let that happen, but only you can stop that. The more we talk, and then you were just soaking it up, which to me was just really funny because you're like, mm -hmm, what else? Mm -hmm, what else? And I'm like, okay, well, let me say a little bit more. Mm -hmm, She's taking it. Okay. But it was just so important for me to share what God laid on my heart because I knew on a spiritual level that you're meant for more. I didn't know what you were going to do or what you were going to be doing. I just knew that I wanted to help and be a part of it and do what I could to support. So your light shines so bright and that bright light attracts a lot of people, a lot of things. And it can attract because, because your light is so bright. You can attract darkness that wants to come into your light. And that's where I wanted to share some things about protecting yourself, uh, protecting you from elements that don't need to be around you. I still remember we're in the cafeteria. And one of the things you said to me, because I really wanted to just focus on you, you said, well, I don't know how you flipped it around, but you said, well, what do you want to do? I said, well, I think about going back to school. I think about a few things. Uh, actually, it's all in due time. And you said, well, you want to start on your master's? I said, well, yeah, I eventually I will. And then you said, let go to school with me one night just to see the program. So lo and behold, me being just, you know, picking up your energy and following you. I'm out at the school talking to, I think, counselors. And I don't even know how it happened. I had signed up for stuff. I was in the master's program. And I was like, I, I don't know about that. But your energy, your enthusiasm, and your motivation, it was on and crack a So here I am out of nowhere, sitting in the front row, raising my hand in a master's class. I'm like, that's because of you. You did this. You got me here. It's all good, baby. And you got through it and you graduated. <laughs> graduated. Got that master's because I was dragging my feet. I'll, eventually I'll get to it, but you don't play. And that's one of the many things I love about you. What do you want to do, Mama D? I want to go back to school. Well, let's go. Oh, Lord. Got to be careful what I say to these young. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely was like, let's go, Mama D. Um, you were fired yeah, up. You, I was fired up. And you're right. Everything that you said <laughs> to me about protecting myself and slowing down, it was like you were the whisper. You know, Oprah Winfrey states all the time that life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. And life and that God, spirit source, whoever, you know, or if you're atheist, whoever it is that you speak to or lean into from a spiritual perspective, speaks to you all the time. And it can come in a whisper. And then if you're not listening or taking heed to the whispers, there's a yell, there's a scream, there's a shake, there's a rattle, there's, you know. You were the whisper because as soon as you said, protect yourself, you need to protect yourself more. I had gone my entire life without protecting myself. And mm -hmm. my best friend, Robin, was the scream. She has been the yell and the scream that life <laughs> has been <laughs> saying. So, you know, Robin would always say, you cannot trust people. You're too giving. You're too quick to allow folks to come into your life and invite them into your space. You have to protect that. But that whisper, when you planted that seed, I started losing folks. My relationships began to unravel. Why? Because I was ready. I was ready for a new version of myself. I knew 
that I had a calling on my life. I, I knew that I had this big grand purpose and I understood and saw during this time that I had a positive impact on the people around me. It, it's so hard. like the way you just described it, it was just so easy and natural for me to self-motivate and, and straight focus and power through anything that I focused and put my mind to. And I started to have that same kind of ripple effect with the people around me, but I was being taken advantage of. I had my heart broken many of times. And since our meeting since we first met, I've lost quite a few relationships. However, I am much happier. My life has calmed down. I'm doing more by doing less. I am very intentional about my self-care, my self-love, my sleep. Before I would just go, 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 I would prioritize my well-being, whether that's sleep or food. At the bottom of the list, it was always I had to ensure the task was done. But you would always tell me the task means nothing unless you're here. Like you are the task. You are the most important thing in your life. So thank you, Mama D, for being <laughs> the whisper. You are more than welcome. And you know you are more than worth it. And keep in mind when you said you lost people, that's because they were only there really for a season. And in order for you to grow and go and go and grow, you know, some will go with you, but, you know, some will not. So you may have lost a few people, but you gained a lot of you. And the people that you may have lost or moved on without, they may have been the ones more than likely that were draining, or they only needed to be there for a certain period of time. And it was just time for you to go yeah. and keep growing. <laughs> and keep Absolutely. Going. And, and I will <laughs> say that that version of myself when I was in the relationship with each individual that I am no longer um, in a relationship with right now, I send them love and light for sure. There is no bitterness or anger, any of that. I'm, I am in 100% understanding that who I am today, it's just, it's an energy matching. What I enjoy, what I talk about, what I need, what I need to do, who I hang around with, my belief systems, even my spiritual <laughs> belief systems yes. are no longer in alignment on different levels with them. You know you are, you are healed when you are indifferent about relationships that are no longer <laughs> active. It just and if it's not, good. they're not feeding you. If all of the, if the relationship is just draining you and, yeah. and sucking the life out of you, that's, that's one of the terms that I use. Uh, it's time to let go. Let go and let God or whatever ma mantra you need to say. <clears throat> but it's time to let go. Yeah. And well, I'm packing home. light. <laughs> <laughs> I'm packing lighter. I, I, I have a little carry-on bag. And okay. It feels <laughs> really good um yeah. I mean I'm a I'm a hot yoga girl now I'm a hummus you know girl now I I really wasn't that much of a drinker it's just the point I'm making is the version of myself that I am today just is no longer in alignment with where I was 10 okay. years ago five years ago you know 15 years ago and again it's okay to outgrow relationships but and I'm grateful. Let me just say, I'm very, very, very grateful for each and every one of those relationships because they taught me something for sure. Good, bad, or indifferent. They yeah. taught me something. And I would not be where I am today because I am so happy on every level of my life. I That's do. the way we want to live. Which brings me to my t-shirt. Oh. I mean, listeners, you guys. I love that t-shirt. You can't say, I mean, depending on how you're listening to this, if you're listening and watching on YouTube, but I have on this deep orange t-shirt and I have this beautiful butterfly, multicolored butterfly. And my business name that says Joy Tudor, gifted to me by Mama D. Thank you. You are absolutely deserving. 
That's a beautiful color on you. I appreciate that. You know, us, us chocolate folks look good in orange. Don't it's, we? It's, but yep. yeah, I love it. Thank yep. you. So, and speaking of Joy Tudor, oh my gosh, you have watched me and my baby Joy Tudor grow up. Yes. <laughs> over the past couple of years I switched and pivoted so many times you hear that I feel like I'm <laughs> finally here with Joy Tudor it only took okay. me 12 years to get here that's okay but you're there yes we're and here. you just step, step by step day by day they say it takes 10 years to be an overnight success and it's so true it and really you is working, you are working for it you are working hard for it and here you Thank are. You. I know we're doing the Joy to the podcast. This is it's surreal. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. You have no idea. You would think I gave birth to you. Understanding where we are today, you know, given looking back at our journey, what is the one thing that you would have also told me? You know, I I really think I uh I shared with you everything that I was supposed to. Now we do, we still have more to share. Yes. This, this is a lifelong thing we got here mm -hmm. and it just gets better and better. But the things that I did share with you, I could only say certain things when I thought it was the right time. You know, when it was put on my heart, it had to be the right time and it had to be said the right way because I wanted you to be able to hear, like you said, your friend, um, some, you know, talk a little loud, maybe shout a little bit. I'm more of a, you know, Jojo whisperer, but um I think a couple of a month or so ago, we talked briefly and you, and I said something about, you know, you have to take time for you. And you said, oh, I'm going to the spa. I just went to the gym and I was thinking, oh, I need to get to the spa. I need to get to the gym, but you're doing it. And, and that makes me feel so good because you give so much and you we're talking 365, 365 days in a year, 24 seven. That's how you give. That's how you love. That's how you work. But after all is said and done, you have to take care of you or you won't be able to do what you do, what you love to do. So I, I'm just glad that that message went through because you are not playing. You you take self-care to a whole nother level. Oh, I've got my bath oils and crystals. Yeah. 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 I think one yeah. time you were doing yoga in the park on your lunch hour. I was like, mm, I need to try that. I need to do some yoga in the park. I don't, oh, I don't know if I'll be able to get up and get down, you know, at my age. But that was number one priority because you have so much to do and you have so much going on. And I just want to see you get it done. I want to see you oh. get there. Was it 2005? So I want to say it was like 2006 when we met. But since then, I had the home, graduated with my master's, put three children into college. Yeah. I divorced, found love in New York moved to New York. Yeah. Started my own consulting business while doing Joy Tudor. Okay. Started my PhD program in 2012. Um, I didn't finish that because we ran out of money at one point, but that's mm -hmm. okay. Two and a half years count. And I went through my healing process where I had to just really, really get to the root of why am I putting myself last? The ugly duckling syndrome that I was experiencing yes. That's deep. in private. Yeah, I had to, I had to, you know, you Would were you pulling me by that? my coat. You I had did. to work through that. And that's work. Oh. But you put in the work. And look at you now, beauty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the other side guys it is so worth it I'm telling you just what that looks like um is mama d telling me you need to slow down and the pandemic happened and life stopped and guess what I was no longer able to go 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 and I was grateful I was ready to stop at that time um but it should, not take, so tired. it should not take a pandemic for people to slow their lives down, for you to slow down. But apparently it took a pandemic. It took a pandemic. To shut because, you know, down. because the office was, I was at home 100% and I was able to sleep. The first order of business was rest. I had to sleep, 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 sleep. But then I was losing my hair. 
and I had inflammation running all throughout my entire body and that was the stress and dis-ease you know emotional dis-ease started to manifest within my body and it was God shaking me saying okay mama it's time for us it's time to heal it's time to heal I knew because a lot of people get shaken and shook up and they don't listen they don't change they don't do anything different yeah but you listened and you made changes and you did the work you're doing the work we have the choice but a lot of people don't wake up they don't open up their eyes. I mean, how many times do you have to get slapped or shaken or, or shook up? To some people, it's like nothing, nothing happened. Yeah. Well, but you I your toes. <laughs> look, I was, I mean, it was manifesting in my body and I lost literally all of my hair and I could not figure out what was going on. And but like I said, I knew, I knew the one that winter of 2020 mm. that. I was going to go into a season of healing. All that year, I kept hearing and feeling this whisper of saying, I need to heal. And I just saw my life. I I saw me doing Joy Tudor, working. I was developing websites. I was doing business development, um, business coaching. And end of the year, it's, it's going to be time for me to heal. And what that looked like to me was having the conversation with my father, who is an addict who was in and out of my life I know he loves me Mm -hmm. that's not without question however the abandonment issues I was chasing that fatherly love it's like a fatherly love high the best way I could describe it I was chasing that nurturing love I was chasing his love I wanted to be loved you wanted that relationship with your dad yes that is innate that is natural but the, the sad part is that what you went through, a lot of people go through that, but you have something to offer them that a lot of people cannot offer them because you've been through it. So you're talking from experience, but you wanted that daddy relationship. Yeah, I really did. And, and he understood that and knew that, but I had to, because he is an addict, I had to go through my mom to find him. And because of the pandemic, he actually was on lockdown, still at a rehab. And so he gives me a call and, he, you know, he was, of course, excited. I'm, I'm his oldest out of five girls, but he was excited to hear from me, of course, brought him joy, brought me joy. But I said, Dad, I need to have a conversation with you. I am hurting. I am self-sabotaging. He said, what do you mean? I said, I have been going throughout my life more so as of recent filled with anxiety and fear around people that I love leaving me and feeling as though I need to perform for their love and I'm on eggshells if I speak up or piss them off he said I said let let me help you understand why this ties back to you that's because the very first experience I had of that was with you And I need to go back to the very first seed that was planted and explain to you Mm -hmm. that when you would say you were coming to pick me up and you did not, my little six-year-old mind assumed that it was because I took too long to pull my coat down off the coat hanger and did not make it downstairs. And you got tired of waiting. You were tired of waiting. Therefore, you left. I didn't understand the divorce. I did not understand the separation. I, you know, just remember us being happy and having all these wonderful, joyful moments with you. All of a sudden, there is an abrupt change. You're gone. And then when you would say you would come to see me, you would not. And yeah. you did not take care of me financially. You've never been to a play. You've never been to my school before. And I said, and you know what else? My last name. My sister has your last name. My mother had your last name, but I didn't have your last name. This starts with you. And I need to just release this with you. And he just broke down in tears. And he said, Nisi, I'm so sorry. Mm. And so we both talked a little bit more. I received the validation 
not necessarily his approval and I wasn't seeking his approval, but I said, you know what? You don't have to understand it. You don't have to validate it. If you do, that's a bonus. But this is just for me to voice, to give voice to my pain and to make peace with you about it. And when he said, baby, you have always been a Williams because my last name was Riggins at the time. Oh, that was it. Here I am. That was it. (laughs) Here I am. I ended up changing my name and and last, was it last year? Yes, last year, fall last year. Yes. Fall last year. Uh, That was January of last year when I spoke with him. And fall of last year, that's when I made the official legal. I started it in in early summer. And in the fall, I was legally Joanna Williams. So, and here I am on the other side. You are. I got justice for myself. Progressing through it like no other. Yeah. I spoke with my mother. I spoke with my grandmother, my sister, you know, the girlfriend breakup, which was hard. I spoke with her. And, um, it's, I can't say that those conversations were easy. They were hard conversations, but they were much needed conversations. And I must say that every one that I spoke to through and through were, were loving and compassionate, you know, tears were, you know, flowing, but peace and healing was the prominent energy of it. So you did the work. You didn't have to do that. So you (sighs) went through all of that and now you're exhaling again. (laughs) I am. I'm exhaling a lot. That's right. I am. It feels good, doesn't it? It does. It really do. Yeah. It it really do. So, I mean, what has it been like for you watching me go through these type of transitions and what would you advise for someone else who's for, for me, me I, I would say it's been a joy and a privilege to see you grow and to see your wings get stronger and to see you soar higher and higher, which is what eagles do. Thank you. So definitely a privilege and an honor. And I really don't worry because I know you'll, you'll do all right and you'll do what you need to do. I do pray for you and that, that prayer of protection because you are so giving, you are so loving and you work so hard and you do so much. So, um, but with the relationship I have with God and God bringing us together, we good, you good. And to see you and to see what you go through, my God. So one of the things I think in the back of my mind, and we'll talk more about it later is the book, the book. I know. <laughs> uh, the book of joy. So oh. the book of joy, that, that we'll talk about that later. But you just have so much to share and give. First of all, you've given a lot and you've shared a lot, but you have so much more. So I kind of feel like getting my little bucket of popcorn and my glass of wine and watching your life. I'm like, oh, she doing it. She doing it. Um but it's, it's definitely, it's truly an honor and a privilege to be a part of your life, to see you grow, to see what you do and how you do it. Love it. I've grown on so many levels. I mean, when you and I first met, I was a junior project manager. Now I'm a portfolio manager. Yeah, that's <laughs> back then. But you, know. you keep growing. You keep yeah. going. Yeah, it's it's been an amazing ride. And the book, I've had people so many people throughout my life said, Joanna, when are you going to write a book? When are you going to write a book? Well, I did. I I remember I launched a planner, my entrepreneur planner this year. However, there is an autobiography book. There will be an empowerment book coming. Absolutely. You know, it's in me. I know it's in me. Mm -hmm. Um, Right now, I'm just trying to be, uh, my word for for this year was consistency. You know, me and my girlfriends choose a word every year when we start the new year. Um, So I've chosen different words for different categories in my life. And from a professional perspective and um, Joy Tudor perspective, consistency. That's it. it. I I have to be consistent. Um, No matter if I feel like it or the weather is bad, I am doing this podcast interview, period. I had three words that I had picked earlier this year. It was discipline, consistency, and intent. What is the intent? 
have to be consistent and that takes discipline. Absolutely. What I will say for anyone who is, if you feel as though your world is falling apart, you just can't figure out why is this not working? Why is, why is this area of my life stagnant while this part falling apart, you are going through a transformation. Trust, know, and believe. Life is not happening to you. It's happening for you. You are going through a transformation. A beauty, you, are, you are cocooning. <laughs> you are cocooning. And sometimes we have to have the breakdown for the breakthrough. And you will get through it. And I am a living testimony that you can survive you know, divorces. And I can say that from a plural perspective, because I have two under my belt, but that's okay. My personality, I, I, like I'm, I tell myself and I'm gonna tell you, do not settle. So if that means that you have to divorce and move on and you've outgrown that relationship, do not be happy in your misery. I love that period. Cause you know, I have two divorces under my belt, but that's a whole, that, that that's a whole nother podcast same okay but but the thing again the beautiful thing about you is that you are sharing and in your sharing I think that's probably therapeutic but I don't know I don't know if you realize how many people you're helping when you share see that that's a whole nother level because you share and talk about things that people some people can't even grasp some people can't even acknowledge within themselves which is not a good thing because you need to acknowledge because some people are really good at suppressing and in suppressing they're depressing not good but you share and you open up and you explain and you talk and that's part of your light flying around you everybody's flying around you (laughs) like a monster flame yeah I, I mean I did not realize that it wasn't normal to be able to um like self-empower or you know like when I was going through the situation with trying to get through high school you know pregnant oh my god I have I'm pregnant with with twins for me it was okay I cope through strategizing and problem solving that's my coping mechanism now I may feel sad or stressed but my reaction in response to that that stress or sadness is how are we gonna okay how are we what are we gonna do to get out of this because me crying for an unhealthy periods of time. And I say that because I'm being respectful and mindful about anyone who's going through something and they're crying. I've been there. Lord knows. I mean, we could swim a, through a river <laughs> of my tears. <laughs> but the only thing is that I'm rowing while I'm crying. I'm figuring it out and working you through it and solutioning while I'm yeah. crying. I am not. You don't stop. give up and stop. That is not an option. Giving up. I tried to give up one time, Mama D, and I laid on the floor. And this was like 2001. And I was at Carbondale, Illinois, living in a family housing with my three kids. I want to say my daughters were like nine and my son was six. And I was living on the floor because I had $23 in my account. I needed gas. I needed to wash clothes, go to the laundromat. Mm. And the daycare center said I needed to drop $1,300 to pay for the next month coming up because I had three kids. Mm. And I laid on the floor and I said, I give up. Then my son walked up to me and said, mom, I'm hungry. Mm. I, 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 I couldn't give up. My baby was <laughs> like, ma'am, are you done? Because I'm hungry. <laughs> Let's well, get this. I got, I got through it. So say all that to say, you are stronger than what it is, whatever it is that you may be going through we don't give up around here but that's what you show people that's what you don't just talk it you walk it that's a big difference I think sometimes when we've talked I I may have said you might have to rest up you may have to lay down you may have to but eventually you have to get up because giving up is not an option but we can rest up I even was talking to a friend of mine and I said your pity party I'll give you maybe a couple of days and depending on how deep maybe a couple of weeks but you can have a pity party because I can have one too but that pity party has to you have to shut it down yeah and if I see other people who are struggling I mean you know how many girlfriends I've keyed in like uh-uh yeah. we all struggle 
sometimes I'm going through things. I'm going through things. And what I'm going through is going through. That's a lot of going through. So your heart, now you're way over there in New York and I'm here and you'll call and say, you know, you were on my heart. And I'm like, "Mm -hmm, okay, okay, okay. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. mm -hmm. So good to hear your voice. (laughs) Yeah. And I'll be like, uh, you too quiet over there, man. What's going on? Where were we with the results? Yeah. How are you feeling? You're a little too quiet. I'll just say, I, I see it as a spiritual warfare. And when you're meant for something greater, that means you're going to have a whole bunch of stuff come up on you and you have to be careful. That's why you have to be careful of who you listen to, who's around you, what you listen to, what you look at, what you see. You have to be protective of all of that. And I picked up on that light and greatness and things that are happening to you, for you, and around you. And I just wanted you to be really protective of that. But the thing is, is that we all, like you said, we all go through, every one of your girlfriends, everybody that you know has been through something. We all go through something. And thank God we have each other. See, a lot of people, they don't even have someone. And some people do choose to give up. But we have to continuously say giving up is not an option. Resting up is. Sometimes I have to rest up. I lay up. I shut up. I'll roll up into a ball, but then I got to get up. But we have each other and we have to continuously, as you do, you check on everybody. And I think you kick people too. I I know I think I felt your feet before, but, but that's what we have to do. For anyone who is listening and do not have a mama D or a Joe and they are hurting or they're, they may just feel stuck. What advice would you give them? They need to get a Joe. They need to get a JoJo. They need to get a Mama D. First and foremost, they need to realize not only are they not alone. For me, I always say God, Father in heaven. Whatever your higher source is, because you just said you could be an atheist or an agnostic or whatever. Usually you have something as a higher source. Whatever that higher source is, you need to reach out. And that's on a spiritual realm. That's on a, di- not necessarily religious, but that's on a different level. But along with that, we we have earthly, we have earthly matters and earthly solutions. You have to reach out, whether it's a 1-800 helpline help number, whether you step up in a church or you step out and you reach out to a teacher, to a friend, to a cousin, to a relative, there's always someone around. Don't give up because your tribe, you know, your tribe is tough. Oh, you, let's talk about my tribe. I know your tribe is because I met some of them. I, girl, and I don't think I didn't meet all of them, but I met enough no. of them. I like you. Sit down. I have an old lady crew, and then we go back, you know, fifty years plus. But your tribe, oh my God, the energy, the dynamics. Everybody should have a tribe, and even if you don't have a collective group, you've got to have at least one someone that will set you straight, that has your back. And you know that that loves you. You don't have to be, you know, concerned or worried or cautious. They got you. Everybody yeah. should have that. And if anyone listening don't have a tribe, you have the joy to the tribe. We got I was, you. I was going to say, we got a, a life coach right here. Hey. Look, in my tribe, we are there. And I'm so blessed. That's the beauty of the growth of recycling relationships that no longer serve you. It's almost like outgrowing shoe sizes you know as children we grow up and our clothes the sizes of our clothes change that's yes. exactly how spiritual enlightenment and personal development um, can be viewed and measured right is there is yes. a natural evolution but again you have the joy to the tribe and for my entrepreneurs who are out there my do-it-yourself entrepreneurs who are have a wonderful product or service and you're feeling stuck and you're feeling overwhelmed, you have the joy to the tribe. You are not alone. Never. You can do it. Are you on the right path? I want to tell you yes. And I know that's very specific, but I know that will hit someone. So, And keep in mind that the joy to the tribe will call in this old lady, will call in Mama D for some little sage advice when needed. (laughs) But I'm here. I'm praying for us all. You got us covered, Mama D. You got us covered. Where am I headed now on this amazing journey? What do I have in store coming up for 2023? I am excited because we will have the third year of doing the Celebrations of Courage event. Okay. 
Super excited about that. That's where we have a cute, fancy, elegant font. And we honor different categories, swinging from courage, resilience, emerging entrepreneur, impact award. And it's an amazing group of ladies that come together. And men, we don't, we don't discriminate against anyone to just celebrate all of the hard work that we're doing and to recognize the big and small wins. June 3rd, 2023. And then I will do a more pop-up shop for the Joy to the Entrepreneur Planner. And the podcast is doing great. I have over 200 plus requests to be on the Joy to the Podcast. So it will be a very busy for me. And then also I'm doing the Joy Tutor Emerging Entrepreneur Master Classes where that's the business coaching and helping anyone who is struggling, just stuck. You know, I had a friend of mine just tell me over the weekend, she said, Joanna, I have my own CPR training business. She loves it. And she said, but I thought I would be able to just jump right in and be easy. But the best that, oh, yes. Yeah, see, what you do is easy. Your skill, your talent, what you do is easy, but the business management of it, yes. yeah, that's a different beast. And so that's where I come in at and help. So that's what I'll be looking forward to doing in 2023, helping more entrepreneurs move past the needle and meet their goals and move the needle along, I should say, meet their goals, their accomplishment, and really make some progress. Oh, and then another event that I'm adding in the fall is the bodacious fest Ooh. to be bold oh yes oh yes all of that that oh you that oh that's what it's oh. about yes <laughs> we're gonna come cute we're gonna come jazzy lips face beat all of that Brit dress with your cutest okay, okay. and i'm just want to have like a cute open market like a big vendor fair with speakers and all of my black owned businesses come on sis and again others are welcome but i just would like to add a space where we are represented because right. there are not a lot of spaces in my community that reflect and represent this brown girl here so i am creating a new table for my ladies i am this. so excited yes <laughs> I'm, I'm creating the table where we can come and be bold while doing business and support each other. That's what the Bodacious Fest will be about. Okay, we ready. Any pearls of wisdom in closing? The only thing I can really say is keep doing what you're doing. Follow your heart. Follow your higher power. Be the wonderful, beautiful woman that you are. There is no stopping you. Always keep the faith. You will always believe in you. You will always succeed. Thank Don't ever so forget much. it. Don't ever doubt I it. Won't. I will not. Ooh, y'all got to get a mama D if you don't have one. But I'm okay with sharing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with sharing. So if anyone needs, you know, a little bit of mama D, hit us up in the comment section. DM us at Joy Tutor Inc. or Joy Tutor Podcast. Or just go to joytutor.com and shoot us an email. Thank you, Mama D. This has been amazing. Thank you, thank thank you, you thank baby. You. Thank you. Love, Love you. you. Thank you for joining and listening in. We greatly appreciate your time. To learn more about our business development classes, such as how to start a business, business plan development, and if you have a Wix website and you're struggling with updates, we got you. I'm also excited to announce that we've launched our new Entrepreneur Roadmap and Execution Planner along with the class. The class is maxed out at 14 registrants, therefore the class books very fast. However, we do have wait lists available. Sign up at joytutor.com. Also, last but not least, you can follow us on all the social medias at joytutor or joytutor inc. Until next time, take care.